It was just luck that Johnny Cabot and I happened to be in Camellia Gardens at the same time. I was here to prove a point, a theory of mine, one that I've had for a long time about small towns, small living. But Cabot, he was here because he had to hide out. He had to get out of New Jersey and he had to get out fast. Well, you probably read about it in newspapers. He was involved in that warehouse job on the New Jersey waterfront some three months ago. Whitey Roski had set it up, and then at the last minute, he didn't show. Johnny wasn't suspicious. He just figured maybe a blonde had turned up. So he and Pete went ahead without him. They walked right into a trap. A cop stakeout. Johnny hid out in a motel in Camellia Gardens, 2,000 long miles from New Jersey. It was a quiet town, too quiet for Johnny with his big city taste. Well, he holed up in that motel room and he never went out. Just sat there, plunked on his guitar and let his girl support him. She came out from New Jersey with him and took a job hashing at a local cafe. He used to be an entertainer, played with a trio before Danny took him on. They were waiting for the heat to cool off. Need any help? Yeah, you can mend it. Honey, I don't think you appreciate me. So what's to appreciate? All I want to know is how long we're going to rot in this two-bit town. I had a good job at that cocktail lounge in New Jersey. Big tips. Come here with you, I get big bunions. We got ten square feet and always everything's lost. I was looking right at it. What a life. This suburb life ain't for me. Answer it. Hello? 
Hello? Doris, this is Max. Put Johnny on, will you? So who says Johnny's here? You put the dime in the wrong slot. This is important. Tell him that a guy that knows Danny wants to see him. If I see him, I'll pass it on. Who's that? Oh, Max says he's got some friend of Danny's looking for you. Danny's? Give me the phone. Hey, I might find out who turned me into the police. Doris, don't they have anything better than that for you to wear? I'll do Dior's model, the late arrival. Exploding alley. What do you want? Fred Dorella, a friend of Danny's. It's got something to do with the guys back east. Okay, be right over. Good news? Looks like I'm back in the big time. Oh, Johnny. You just stick with old Johnny boy and we're gonna be right back up on top. I made my first contact with Cabot to a friend of his who ran a bowling alley. Hey, Max. Max was a small town punk, but he served my purpose. Yes, sir, Mr. Drella. Hey, nice shot. Thanks. Have a drink. Doreen? Another colonial club in soda for Mr. Dorella. This one's on me. Hey, you really in on things. Do you really know who fingered Johnny? Max, you talk too much. Yes, sir. Besides being late, tell me more about this Cabot. Oh, I got you just the kind of guy you say you want. He's a good uh, driver and a good heater man and careful, careful as they come. I, I got you a good man, Mr. Drell. When Danny gives the word, I act. But I was just thinking uh, about my cut. Uh, there is something in it for me, ain't there? The usual. Well, I am taking a big risk, you know. What big risk? Well, you know. Dorella gets mad, so what? Now, Johnny, don't argue with him. Danny sent him. Now, what's Doris doing here? Why, Mac, I just thought I'd do a little folding. Johnny, this is Danny's friend, Mr. Dorella. That's Doris Jackson. Last time I saw you, it was Dory Gettle. Dory Gettle? You got rocked. I've never seen you before in my life. I would have remembered. Seen Whitey Roski lately. The name's Doris Jackson, honey. And I don't know what you're talking about. She just come along for a ride. Get rid of her. Now, you wait just a minute. Johnny, take it easy, buddy. He knows who fingered you in New Jersey. Play it his way, will you? Look, mister, you got me mixed up with somebody else. 
wait in the car. Look, honey. You know me. I'm Doris Jackson. She's got me all wrong. I never even heard of a Dory Gettle. Never even heard the name before. I said wait in the car. Okay. You say so. I gotta go to work anyway. I'll see you later, Judd. Yeah. Glasses. Yes, sir. I need someone with experience. I've been around. Who else you are? No one. Two men making a bank. How big is this Fort Knox? You know, I work for big stacks. Let's get that settled right now. What? Your price is settled. Two thousand in advance, small bills, no new stuff. Thirty percent of the take. You come high. You are careful. Like Max says, I've been in racket five years and I've only done one little six-month stretch. I've been in it for 20 years. Only got to do one year. Time off for good behavior. So we're both careful. Now, what's the bank? Harbor Federal Trust. Harbor Federal Trust? And you're not hiring anybody else? No one. I'll see you, pal. Sit down until I tell you to go. Look. You couldn't take that with an army tank and a whole company. You're right. But you came with one man. A good idea. One man. You. Me. What makes them hand over the money? Hypnotism? <laughs> love. Small town love. Five-minute plan. Small cafe in sat until after midnight making out plans. I outlined the scheme from beginning to end. I would go to the vice president of the bank to get the money, while Cabot would keep his wife on ice at the house. Had a five-minute schedule of phone calls set up to protect us. No more than five minutes between each phone call. There was... He'd take care of Mrs. Wilson fast and then beat it. It was a foolproof setup. By the time we broke up, Cabot was hired in the kite. He was already spending the money. This guy went for my idea so big it didn't even slow him down when I gave him the scoop on Whitey Roski and Dory Gettle. I've never seen you like this before. Does this mean what I think it does? Well, now, that all depends. Oh, Johnny. Is the job that good? Better. I knew it. I knew it. Just think, me, Doris Jackson, right at the top of the heap. You mean Dory Gettle? Dory Gettle? Don't be silly. <laughs> that Fred Durella's got a screw loose. Fred Durella is a smart man. So, okay, he made a mistake. But look, let's not talk about him. Let's talk about us. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I want everything at once. When is it? Tomorrow. What do we do first? Buy the car? No, I buy a ticket to Los Angeles. And then we buy the car? No, then I rent an apartment. And then we buy the car? No, then I buy the new electric job with twin speakers. Nothing for me? Yeah. I got a present for you. Oh, Johnny. Money, 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 money. Oh, Johnny, we're going to be loaded. Oh, Johnny. 
I'm your woman. No. You're not my woman. You're Whitey Roski's woman. morning across from the Wilson's house. Johnny was right on time. You'd even convince me. Yeah? The what? You're okay. You look like the typical jerk that sell correspondence guitar lessons. Where's the house? White one on the corner. I never saw so much of nothing in my life. It's only a half a mile from the place you're staying. What's the matter? Didn't you ever leave your room? For what? Don't knock it. Or else you're gonna find a neighborhood where nothing ever happens. People here live the kind of lives magazine ads talk about. Hey, who's that? Mrs. Wilson. You didn't even look. I don't have to look. I just checked my watch. 7.35. At 7.35 every morning, Mrs. Wilson comes out for her milk and her newspaper. Well, now she may live like a magazine ad, but she don't look like one. She is a mess. I've got to get memorized for our women's club this afternoon. This afternoon, not this afternoon. You promised to buy me a new baseball uniform. Sorry, Bobby, but I can't do it today. I'll get it for you tomorrow. But, Mom. Bobby, our women's club has been waiting six months for this speaker. Now, you come on. Take a seat and go down and eat your breakfast. Ready? Hurry up, you'll be late. Madam Chairman and honored guests, we have the great good fortune to have with us today a woman who is foremost in a field. I wonder if I should call her a lady. I know what I'd call her. Uh. <laughs> Morning. I... Mush. Oh, no. Not this morning. But make it black, please. Ken, when I introduce the speaker, should I... Should I say woman or lady? A woman, I guess. Your father is hung over again. What's hung over? Sick, sick. Had too much to drink, Pop? Young man, how would you like to leave the table without your breakfast? Can I leave the table? Now that's a great threat. You eat your breakfast. Lush. Why were you out late last night? Mr. Johnson, the bank again. 
expect me to buy a new baseball uniform this afternoon? Well, your mother will have to do it, Bobby. I have to work today. But Mom's busy. She's got to go to the women's club this afternoon. And I just got to get it today. I just got to. Just have to get it today, Bobby. Have to get it. Anyway, Pop, I just got to. Tomorrow's the big game. Bobby, I told you I can't get it for you today, and I can't. That's all there is to it. I can't. But, Pop! Your mother's running things here, Bobby. If she says the women's club is more important than her family, then that's the way it has to be. Well, that's a fine thing to say. Well, it's true, isn't it? Of course not. This is an exception. An exception? You're so wrapped up in other people, you never have any time for Bobby and me. I used to have a wife, but now I'm living with the vice president of the Camellia Gardens Women's Club. Why, if I don't address you as Madam Chairman, I, I'm not recognized. Do you think I go to meetings because it's fun? It sounds incredible, but I do. I certainly do. I think it's the only thing you really enjoy. And do you think that Mr. Johnson would have promoted you to vice president at the bank if I hadn't cultivated Mrs. Johnson at the women's club? No, no, of course not. As a matter of fact, you're doing my job so well down at the women's club, I'm wondering why I bother going to work at all anymore. Well, you can try doing my job at the women's club. You can change places with me any day. Well, why change places? According to you, you're doing everything. Running the bank, running the women's club, running everything. I'm just a sixth wheel around here, so you'll spin me off. Carry on, Mrs. Wilson. Carry on. The floor is yours. Quiet. I can't hear who it is. What was that again? Oh, sure, she's in. Hold the phone. Speak of the devil. Oh, Mrs. Johnson. Her sister, Priscilla Arbach. Oh, no. You don't think putting your hand over that now is doing any good? I've probably heard every word. Hello, Priscilla. Uh, oh, Nancy. Uh, is anything wrong? What in the world is all that noise? Oh, the noise? <laughs> oh, it must have been the radio. That guy number 19 is two minutes late this morning. You mean everybody around here eats and sleeps by a clock? Exactly. What a lie. Some people like it that way. The same thing every day? That's our whole plan. Their daily routine, our split-second timing. I wonder if this Priscilla Arbach has much for breakfast. No, no, she probably has chocolates. Keeps a box right by the phone. Dials the phone with one hand, plunks in the chocolates with the other. The early bird catches the worm, you know. Mm. Oh. Nancy, I want you to be prepared for a wonderful compliment. Now take a deep breath. Are you ready? Mm. The committee has decided they want your Ken to be president of the PTA this coming year. You've decided what? We've decided that we want Ken for... Nancy, can't you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I hear you. You say you want Ken for president of the PTA? What? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I don't think it's funny at all. Uh, no, I think Ken would make a delightful president. <laughs> I want nothing to do with the PTA. As far as I'm concerned, the PTA can go to... Go where, Pop? Uh, never mind, Bobby. You, uh, go get dressed for school. I am dressed. Oh. Well, then, go brush your teeth. You know, this should certainly be a step up for Ken in our community. At least that's what Mr. Johnson says. You've talked to Mr. Johnson? Of course. And he's very enthusiastic about it. I know Ken won't let us down. You tell him we'll have lots of fun. Yes, Priscilla, I'll tell him. <coughs> Mr. Johnson is very enthusiastic and you'll have just lots of fun. Mr. Johnson's in on this too? So it seems. Well, that does it. What time does he usually leave? Eight. Sometimes ten to eight. 
six or seven times. I cased him last month. He never left earlier than 10 to 8, never later than 8. Same routine every day. I guess he likes it, huh? Sure he likes it. He's got a happy home. Just chock full of love. Nancy, I have something to say to you. I think maybe we've both said enough. Now, please, Nancy. Darling, let's not fight. Seems like all we've been doing is fighting lately. Look, I just want you to sit down there and listen to me for a minute. Now, will you do that? All right. I'm listening. Nancy. Yes. I can't talk to you like this. Sit over there. No, I don't think I will. You're much too serious. Besides, I know what you're going to say. You... You do? Darling, I couldn't care less about the PTA or whether you're president of the PTA. As far as I'm concerned, you can tell him to go jump in the lake. That's not what I wanted to say. Nancy, I want... My bike plate! Mom, I lost my bike plate! If you seen it? Oh, no. Not another one. Don't move. Nancy. Oh, Bobby. Never mind, Mom. I found it. Now, that's a good place to keep it. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. Now, what was it you were saying? It wasn't important. Some other time. <laughs> well, it is getting late. Yes. Yes, I, I better get to work. What you like out the cellar? Oh, just tell her I'll think it over. This hangover's killing me. Maybe the whole thing will look better tomorrow. Well, I better hurry. It's ten of eight. Well, I'm a little late. Hey, haven't you forgotten something? Uh, have I? She wants the kiss. Bobby, what are you doing? Just studying Dad's technique. All right, young man, in the house. Okay, but I don't think I'm going to miss much anyway. Well, pretty fresh, <laughs> isn't he? He may be right. You didn't tell me they had no kid. So what if I didn't? I think I'd like a real goodbye kid. Why, I should. Sure. Hey, I hope Bobby's peeking through that window. In this kind of setup, you tell me everything, mister. I don't want to fool around with no kids. Now, you get rid of them or cut me out. What's with you and kids? I had one getting away one time, and I ain't going to fool around with no kids. All right, now, now you calm get rid down. Of them. You wait until the kid goes to school. So what time does he go? 8.15 on a nose. Every day at the same time? Every day at the same time. My name. See what I mean? Love. See you later. He's a guy that'll do anything for his wife. We're gonna make him do it. I fixed breakfast for two this morning. Orange juice? Just coffee. Figured you wouldn't be eating breakfast at home today. I'm sorry, honey. It's the hangover. We had a pretty big night last night. Remember? Last night you said you'd ask Nancy for a divorce this morning. You promised me. I just couldn't, that's all. Okay. I don't want it this way. What do I say? What did you plan on saying last night? You knew it wouldn't be easy. Easy? Every time I build up to the subject, somebody or something interrupts. It's some gossipy club woman, a bike plate, or a, a baseball uniform. And when I finally tell her I have something to say to her, she tells me she knows what it is. And does she? No, no. She thought it was something else. Ken, I didn't want this to happen any more than you did. It has happened. We're faced with it. All right. Shall 
we go. Now listen, no one will make fun of your clean trousers, and if they should, you just tell Miss Forbush. Oh, uh, Mom, I don't want to be a snitcher. Well, I'm getting tired of waiting. A muffler. That's good thinking. Yeah. Perfect house to house salesman. I listen, come right home for lunch. Oh, I forgot I'll need 50 cents for the school plays this afternoon. I'll give it to you at noon. Aren't they giving it for the parents this time? Sure, Tuesday night, but you don't want to go, do you? Why not? I'm not in it. <laughs> I'm sure there are parents who go whose children aren't in it. Not very many. Well, I'll ask your daddy if he wants to be one of the not very many. I'll call you between 10.30 and 11. I'll be waiting. Off you go. Well, that's your cue and mine. Right. Don't use that unless you have to. Wait the full five minutes. What else? Five minutes between each phone call. Don't get trigger happy. Everything is going on schedule. Just as I planned. Good morning, ma'am. I'd like to demonstrate a fine new product. I'm sorry, I never buy from a door-to-door -door sales. But lady, I'll give you ten dollars if you guess what I'm selling. I bet you can't guess what I'm selling. Ten dollars. You certainly got a new approach. What's the catch? No catch, I promise. Go on, guess. Whatever it is, I won't buy. Oh, it doesn't matter. Go on, guess. What does it say? Obviously, you're selling guitars or guitar lessons or music. You're absolutely right. Here's your ten dollars. But for what? I can't take this. Here, take it oh, back. No, no, I wouldn't think of it. You keep it. Go on. Keep it. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you could do me a big favor if you would. What would you like? I'd sure like to have a drink of water, ma'am. Oh, of course. You wait here. I'll go get you one. Now, let's not scream, Mrs. Wilson. We don't want to disturb nobody, you know. How did you know my name? We locked this one too. You ought to be more careful when you're alone, I mean. Where's the other phone? In there. That's good. I want to see both phones. What do you want? There's nothing of any value here. Uh, let me decide that, Mrs. Wilson. What are you going to do? We're going to sit down, Mrs. Wilson. We're going to wait. to do. What are we waiting for? You want to steal something, steal it and go. We're waiting for a phone call. Oh, Ken, you'll never have the nerve as long as we're in Camellia Gardens. So let's get out. Get out of Camellia Gardens? Let's go to, uh, to Las Vegas. We needn't even pack our clothes. Just leave. And you could phone Nancy from there. And what about my job? Well, we wouldn't have to stay long, just a couple of weeks, and then we could come back on our terms. Our terms? Why, Mr. Johnson would fire me so fast. All right, well, let's not come back. Let's forget the bank. Make a complete break with the past. Why should you spend the rest of your life doing things you don't want to do? What time does the plane leave? 6.15. You mean you'll go? Oh, Ken. I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> well, one more dollar. Did you 
notice how I didn't let her get by with that routine about her husband donating at the office? Skirt, I've just got to get home. Well, let's just try Nancy once more. I heard the radio shut off. Oh, my husband will be sore as an owl. Irma, remember the community fund. Well, you go on. I've got to go home. Oh, no. We'll wait till we can both come back together. signs of becoming a public scandal. Would you consider... Would you consider a divorce a public scandal? Has it gone that far? I just asked you a question, Mr. Johnson. It might. Then again, it might not. But if uh, it has reached that point... I didn't say it has. Well, obviously, you will have to make your own decision, Ken. I merely wanted to tell you how you feel about it. No, how the bank feels about it. Mm -hmm. Are you an entertainer? No, Mrs. Wilson, I'm not. I'm a killer. Don't move. Shooting at me. I'm glad you stood there and shot me. If 
if I wanted to shoot you later, you'd be dead. I'm bleeding. A little blood never hurt nobody. Why are you here? We've got no shoes, no furs, nothing. Why are you here? Hey, what you got under there? What do you mean? Look, honey, I ain't married to you. Maybe bank presidents don't mind their women looking like that, but I do. Now, you take all that junk off. Remove the artillery. You wouldn't want to make the front pages looking like that, would you? What front pages? What are you talking about? Probably all of them. You know, this is the kind of stuff that sells papers. Now, you finish the job and hurry up, because I ain't got all day. And you... You ain't got hardly no time at all. My husband knew what you're doing, he'd kill you. He'd probably thank me. You've got a lot of nerve. A common, uncouth criminal to come in my home and tell me how to look. I don't care how I look. I know you don't, but I do. I like a broad to look sharp. I'm not a broad. All of you are. <laughs> You're hurting me. Let me have a look at that. Hey, you know, I got a good eye to shoot like that. A scratch ain't even skin deep. <laughs> for me, Max. Yeah. I have an important favor to ask you. Sure, Mr. Dorella. Wait here for me. Well, I've got things. When you see me walk out of that bank across the street, call that number. If I don't come out, don't call. Leave it alone. I like a mess. 
mercy bed. Where's the closet? Are you going to lock them in the closet? Not a chance, lady. Can I help you, sir? Uh, no. I'm just going to see Mr. Wilson. Oh, well, uh, that's his secretary over there, Mr. I know. Thank you. Can I speak with Mr. Wilson? Who shall I say is calling? Cisterella. Fred Durell of New York. Oh, yes, just a moment, please. Well, looky here what I found. The skeleton in the closet. Hey, where'd you get this? That was a joke, my husband. When? Long time ago. I said when? About ten years ago. That's what I thought. You get this? And you wear that? You know, it's just about time you started wearing this little joke. Put it on. Put it on? Right now. No. Will me scratch the other cheek? No, no, please. Don't. Don't put it on. Hey, where are you going? You want me to put it on? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on. Uh, no. Not in there. Right here. <laughs> I ain't had so much fun in a long time. You just never mind, Miss Wilson. I'll do it for you. Not that too big crook, I deserve to be shot. What am I saying? Get in here right now! Drag yourself out of this bed, Miss Wilson. Mind. Hey, I guess you gals are all alike when old Johnny steps on your starter, huh? Yeah, I guess we all are. We're all just the same. Big bore. Who are you kidding? This is Christmas, and I just got the nicest package. And ain't you glad I came along? Yeah, I've just been waiting for you. You never had it so good, did you? No. We're both a couple of wild cats. 
And this little wild cat is all mine. Not while you've got that gun on you. Who are you kidding? Come on, put it on the table. Uh-uh. <laughs> put it on the table. Oh, go on, you like it. <gasps> you can Stop it! Stop it! Get away from me! You gutter side. Go on! Go on, kill me! Get it over with! I can't stand any more of you! You hear me? Kill me! Robert, you got the nerve? Go on, kill me, kill me, kill me! I got the nerve, but I'll kill you when I get ready. Cinderella, <laughs> you may go in now. Thank you, miss. Good morning, Mr. Cinderella. Have a seat. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Now, how can we be of assistance to you? I'd like to see you about cash in a rather large bank room. All right. $70,000. This is rather large. Yes. But an okay from one of the bank executives should be sufficient identification. Oh, certainly, Mr. Drell. I didn't understand. Which one of the bank executives here are you acquainted with? You, Mr. Wilson. What? You, Mr. Wilson. You'll okay it. Me? Why, I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, but I've seen you. As a matter of fact, I know you very well. You live at 12, Alden Drive. You have a son, Bobby, six years old. Your wife, Nancy, is a big shot in a women's club. Right now, she's at home with a friend of mine. A friend of yours? Well, let's say uh, a business associate of mine. That would be a better description. Mr. Dorella, what is this? Very simple, Mr. Wilson. This is a holdup. What? Until you okay that bank draft there, and we cash it together here, your wife is in very serious danger. You're crazy as a Betsy bug. <laughs> Turn it off. And you think I'm going to hand over seventy thousand dollars in cash, just like that? I'm sure of it. In fact, I can bank on it. You won't even get to the front door. May I suggest you call your home? I think it is. You hang up. Let's go ahead. Hello? Nancy? Ken. Ken. Nancy, are you all right? Is there anyone there with you? She's all right, Wilson, and old Johnny's right here with her. Nancy, can you hear me? Is he... That's enough, Mrs. Wilson. Get off the phone. Nancy. Ken, can I? I can't. Now, Mr. Wilson, I'd like to speak to the man in your office, please. Put him on, mister. He wants to speak to you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Hello? Everything all right? Just fine. I have 11.20. I'll call you in exactly five minutes. Maybe less. That means we're on our way to the vault. You got that? I don't call you within five minutes. Go ahead. Convince Mr. Wilson? What are you going to do? Nothing, if you cooperate. I plan to walk out of this bank with $70,000. And if I don't cooperate? My partner is cold-blooded and trigger-happy. You're bluffing. Oh, you think so, Mr. Wilson? I could have the police there in five minutes. They'd be there in ten minutes, Mr. Wilson, not five. I know the police protection in Camellia Gardens. It's undermanned. 
Have one patrol car for every seven square miles. They'd be there. In time to find you, I've got the saber. Suppose I told you I didn't care what happened to my wife. Make it short. Hello? Oh, Ken, darling, I'm so happy I can hardly believe it's true. I just had to phone you to make sure I'm not dreaming. Say it's true. Say it. Are we really going? Yes. Yes. Was that all you have to say? I... I'm busy right now. I'll call you back. But hurry. I'll give you just five minutes. Who was that? That was the woman I'm flying to Las Vegas with tonight. Your girlfriend? No. My next wife. Then I'll be doing you a favor. That's right. You will. Seconds. Let's sit here and watch the clock. See who pops first. Priscilla, I can't talk now. Don't forget, Nancy. When I want something, I get it. Bye, Priscilla. Ain't no alternative. We got. Forty seconds to live. Unless I call your wife's gonna be dead in 35 seconds. And you'll go to prison. I'll be a convict, you'll be a murderer. I'm not murdering anyone. Twenty-six seconds. But you can't just walk into a house and kill a defenseless woman. My partner will. Seventeen seconds. It takes twelve seconds to dial, Mr. Wilson. Make up your mind. It's like your time's run out, lady. You're sure taking your time today. All right, all right. I know this is the final stretch. 11.30. Right. When the second hand hits, I hit. He'll be back in a minute. Uh, I don't want to miss him, so I'll just hold on, if you don't mind. No, that'll be perfectly all right. Stacks of thousands, please. Small denominations, Mr. Wilson. Nothing larger than a hundred. Thank you. 
still have plenty of time. I'll make my call after I leave the bank, Mr. Wilson. Yes, yes, of course. I still have another minute for that. Thank you, Stevens. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Wilson. Speak to you for a minute? Later, Pop. Later. I'll be on my way. Don't forget to make that call. Now, hold on a minute. You stop or I'll shoot. Now give you 
one more minute, just in case he was trying to get through. Except with no kiss, you get him out of here. Get him out. Run, Bobby, run fast. Call the police. Get the car in the run. How do you think you're done? Don't, don't, don't hurt him, please. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him, Mom. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> Where'd you come from, boy? How'd you get in here? Answer me. Have you got any friends out there, kid? Bobby, why didn't you go when Mommy asked you to? I didn't hear you. What's he doing here, Mom? Why'd you have to come home, boy? You're in there. You're surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Covered. Where's that other door? It's in there. I'm warning you, this is your last chance. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, he took Bobby on out the side door. You stay here. Drop your gun. No. No, kid. No, kid. Oh. Don't die, boy. I'm sorry, boy. You come get me, me and this kid you killed. over to your sisters, then pack our suitcases. We're going to take a vacation. Vacation? Yes. We're going to Las Vegas this evening. Oh, Ken, you're mad. I could never get packed back to Las Vegas. Then don't pack anything. We'll buy something there. Darling, I'll be home very soon, and I love you very much. Oh, darling, I love you too. Oh, oh no! I've got to hang up. I can't talk any longer. 
He's snapping pictures of me, and I, I'm wearing that horrible negligee you gave me. Stop it, do you hear? Let me change my clothes. Nancy, listen to me. Will you go? Yes, darling, I love you. Come home. Goodbye. Miss Meredith, did Miss Harcourt call back? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. With all the excitement, I forgot. She's waiting on your private line. Thank you. Helen? Helen, are you there? I just can't handle all those women by myself. You've got to hang up the phone and help me. Aren't you through yet? Yes. I'm through. Ellen, you're sitting here for 15 minutes. It's not worth it. No man is worth it. That's right, Carol. It isn't worth it. What's my story? I've got nothing more to say. Well, that's my day in the country. With simple people leading a simple life. Wait, wait till Priscilla sees it. Oh, Ken, I, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but you know it was Priscilla and her silly phone call that saved my life today? I know. No, darling, you don't know. <laughs> she phoned just as I was on my last five minutes. She must have been sent from heaven. <laughs> I asked her to phone. You asked her? Hmm. Did you tell her what was going on? Yes. Oh, darling. <laughs> oh, you should have heard her. What an actress. She was magnificent. As usual. Oh. What's the matter now? Oh, I just thought of something. What? A PTA. Ask a favor, do a favor. Uh-oh. I see what you mean. Well, I guess that old ghost... Uh-uh. I guess that old girl has got herself a new president. Not until after our vacation. That's right. Well, at least I'll be rested up. Huh? Don't be too sure. What do you mean? I, uh, brought the negligee. <laughs> <laughs>